And so we'll head to the picks and bands for game number three right about now. And for the curious on that MVP vote, it was definitely Variety. I mean, I thought I had it covered all the way. Yeah, Variety uh, <laughs> clearly was the guy that stepped up and really uh, took everything into uh, everybody's dinner. So nice job there for the solo laner. Dignitas here, first pick, first band. Sir Kett off the table. They picked it themselves last time. Not going to be the case this time around. What I find to also be really interesting is that Dig oftentimes will lean towards that second pick choice mm -hmm. whenever they're in this kind of position. And so for them to be opting for the first pick here, uh, I think we can see something spicy. Almost always we see Dignitas go for the secondary pick when they have the choice. So like you said, we'll see what winds up happening here. Artemis going to be the ban as well. Across the way, Athena. Again, Dignitas uh, choosing the first pick is weird. I'm, I'm fried because it's Mouse who picks the side. Mouse lost. There yes. you go. But <laughs> even still, the bands are odd as well. We're used to seeing the mid lane bands here coming out from Dignitas. I think that Artemis has just had a lot of success. And I, I don't feel as though it's a pick that they want to risk because maybe Arkill wants to pick up the ROM. And he felt as though the Artemis was one of the main reasons why he was struggling so much against uh, in that first right, game. Right, 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 right. Well, here the first pick, Sobek, has me scratching my head a little bit. No surprise to see the ROM prioritized early alongside the Cerberus. Sure, Nika's looked really strong on it. It's first pick, Sobek. That's a little interesting. I think the first pick, Sobek, happens because it, it's like what we mentioned in earlier sets where... If you're not really certain where you want to take your draft, you can always mm. go for a safe, reliable pick. To me, Sobek fills that bill entirely. It's a safe, reliable pick. You leave a little bit of ambiguity with the rest of your composition. For you sure. get some insight as to what Mouse is leaning towards, and it's evident they have a lot of preference towards this Cerberus. It's something that they have gone for in every single one of their matches so far. Yeah, Nika's looked really strong on it, so going to continue to go in that direction. On her, the Hunter of Choice, alongside Terra, which is, uh, she's really just damn strong right now. So, eesh. Kind of bracket one more time, the Jungler of Choice. Still a slight chance that this Terra ends up in solo, although would definitely prefer to see her in that support role now that she hasn't had her global ultimate for quite some yeah. time. She doesn't have the same sort of laning phase as before, and I do feel as though Sobek will indefinitely perform better in the hands of Variety for solo into a Cerberus matchup, if that's the case, because that's what it has been, is, is Nika nonstop on the Guardians. Um, on her, I, I love this pick, though, for Arkill, because not only is it one of his, like, OG gods, but on top of all that, it's super aggressive. It, mm. It's perfect for trying to really chase down and pummel the ROM from the very start of a laning phase. That said, if he's too aggressive, the Kabrakid might take advantage of that, so certainly something he's got to keep in mind there. Uller, one more time for Mouse. This has been Big Man Tings all three times on the Uller, and look, uh, I, I, I liked it. I didn't hate it. Um, but from what we've seen out of Big Man Tings playing on the mages, I really just want to see him continue doing that. Dignitas going to grab Habwa and Neath, and this is almost undoubtedly going to be Hebo Jungle Neath in the mid lane. Four zeros. Zeros has said a number of times that he loves Neath, just kind of hard to really find a composition that she does well in. I think this is great. I think this is the perfect composition for a Neath. She's got her frontline capability between the Terra and the Sobek. There's a lot of well-rounded damage also mm. because you have on her a Neath for your early to mid. Then the Habwa Kuvo, we're expecting to see him really be popping off in that mid to late game stride. Possibly even turn up in the early. All depends on how that jungle phase really goes for him. Yeah, Dignitas have a nice, well-rounded composition. This is really going to excel at all parts of the game, depending on different players and how they work out. Mouse returning to their double hunter, triple guardian st uh, standard, as is now known. Very interested to see Cherio again on the Kabrakin. Less interested to see Big Man Tings again on the Uller. How are you feeling about this one? Dignitas had to close out the fights if they're the initiators. Otherwise, I think that Mouse could turn things around with their composition. This is uh, this is a possible upset. Definitely keep your eyes open and see if Dignitas falls in the mouse trap. Let's get up to game number three. Hindu and Aggro, take us away. Well, I mean, should have been a possible upset game two, to be fair. But yeah. here we are in game three with a Hobwire jungle and a Neath and an Anher for Dignitas here. So some change for them. 
Yeah, and I really like the Onher selection in particular because that's a guaranteed penetration right off the bat. It's part of Onher's passive that he's going to be adding that extra pen, and then Zeros is going to come in. You can build execution on one of those characters, set up for the other one. And this is a well-drafted composition from Dignitas. I'm just worried. I don't think that you can play the exact same draft against Dignitas three games in a row. I just don't think that they'll let you get away with that. Clearly, Dig got better towards the end at, at how to play against that composition. They figured it out at least in one team fight, and sure. that's all it took that's for it them took. to win that game. So I, this is risky in my mind for Mouse to go to the same comp three games in a row. Who do you guys at home think will win this game? That's a real question for you guys to answer. Mouse probably gets a little bit more love yet again, unless you like the composition out of Dignitas, which is a little bit different this time around. Zeros has got sick of dying. Yes. Is what he said to me with this Neath pick. Well, at the same time, Uller, is li Uller loves laning against Neath because you just it's walk true. at her, force her to backflip, and then you guarantee your axe combo off of her back. Well, maybe you're going to fight at the start of the game. Bit of a trade-off between the two. Sprint available for Trick Tank this time around with the upgraded Heavenly Wings, I should say. And so he's going to have a bit of a difference there. Just a little bit of a turmoil in the jungle. No wards placed from what I can tell on that side. It was both looking for a cheeky pick. <laughs> Neither team ends up getting one. So we're back to square one, except someone got top damage now. When without Discordia, that isn't really that impactful. I am a little bit worried about the Neath into that Uller and the Kabraken. Uh, well, obviously, Spirit Arrow is Neath's best damage skill. That does Root. Cherio is Root immune. If you can, I mean, at the same time, though, the Zeros is a very high level caliber player of like, if someone blinks on him, he has the reaction time to be able to backflip straight away. Yes. So if he can do that on cooldown, that's his kind of what he's after this Neath for, I feel, is backflip, backflip, backflip whenever I'm in trouble and stay at max range. Yeah, and that is the idea, but that's where Blink comes in from Cherio yeah. to try and play around that. And don't forget, backflip slows in that area that she takes off from. Yes. Uh, Cherio is slow immune he doesn't on the one, that. so he's not worried about that really at all whatsoever. And I like Dignitas' adjustment here. This is a dual lane that can fight much, much better than the last few that Dignitas has gone for, at least in game two, I should say. The, the, sure. The game one dig, uh, composition fought pretty well at level one and level two. This one, uh, probably the best yet for Dignitas to try and get kill opportunities. And as a result, Trickstand goes with that upgraded sprint right away. Now, generally, junglers will always go for their boots first of all, but hang on a second. Trick's just going to push the motor here? Forces Mouse back and to get the purple. opens up the, the door to go to purple. I guess so. Okay, 23%. More Mouse fans are joining the bandwagon now. A little bit more on board. This uh, double hunter, triple guardian, after seeing it work two games in a row. Well, almost two games in a row. Cuba Fred, though, after the boots. Where's he going to go? Is this Warlocks? Yeah, he's been going Warlocks on the Hebo jungle just about every time as, man, both Cubo and Jiro's take a ton of damage there between BMT and Cherio. And that does, uh, I've historically been against it, but every game Cubo's gone for it, it's worked out, so eventually I'm going to have to stop criticizing it, well, it and also, just accept that it works. In fact, it gives you everything you want as yeah. a jungler, I mean, as a mid laner, or as a mage anyway. You want Warlock stuff or health, power. which is survivability, power, which right. is kill people quicker. Right. It's a good item. There's, uh, I've never contested that, just a little slow coming out of the jungle, but uh, Mouse Sports probably wants to take this one a little bit slower like they did in game one. Yeah. Uh, got off to a great start in game two, so they, they kind of pushed the gas pedal a little bit more there, but overall, I think that could still work out nicely for Cubo Fred, and this Hebo pick is designed to get past the front line and not worry about as much about the, the Guardians and just be able to insta-kill either of these hunters. So if Cubo goes blink, that's the entire idea. If things aren't going as well or he's far enough ahead that he doesn't need the blink, he could see just an Aegis try and give himself some more survivability. Hebo can knock down tanks very easily, but he's really designed to obliterate squishies. I'm not going for the blink either. Go for the safer route with the beads in the early stages. Nice pillar coming into play there, but Jermaine avoids it nicely with a roll just to the left of it. Now our kill under pressure instead has to leap away as Dardes gets a good beat down in response there and takes the brunt of the damage from those minions. This is a comfort pick for both Jermaine and for Arkill. These are the hunters that I think both hunters are, are most known for. I think of on her when I think of Arkill and that phenomenal performance he had during the group stages in what, season three land uh, under the Sanguine banner. Uh, Jermaine obviously on the ROM is yeah. what, what he's known for. And this is an exciting matchup because I think that we could see both uh, hunters play a little bit more aggressive in these lanes than they have in the previous few games. When Artemis is there, 
the aggression Ooh. doesn't really happen. Water hands down for a second from Cuvo, but it'll only be for a second because he is hub war after all. But the blue buff invade could work out for Mouse here. Knockup is available on the water hands, and there you go, secured by Cuvo, and he'll walk away back to safety again. Good work from Dignitas, just securing their own jungle on gods that are a little bit, you know, scared <laughs> to start the game and say against a Cerberus and Cabrak. Sometimes, and. Uh, again, Cherio going for this tiny trinket start, and that means he's likely going for Bancroft. I didn't love it in game one, but it worked out for the most part. It's good I hate, damage. I hate it here. I hate it here because you need protection against Neath Hebo in the early game. Those are gods that will make you hurt in the early game unless you've got early game protection. An early Void Stone. Go back for the Jade Emperor's crown. There are, there are options there for Kabraken in the jungle that will up his damage and give him some more protection from the Bancroft's Talon. Uh, with Bancroft's, you're still not out training a Hebo. If he goes for Bancroft's, there's just no way. He's doing more damage than you. Uh, I do not like this pickup. We'll see what happens with Zero's next then, because he's now level 5, and what you're looking realistically from underneath is to pressure one of the side lanes, or the other lane she's not in, because she does get played in dual lot too. I think dual lane is definitely the kill option on Jermaine, really. Without, uh, without the beads as well, he went for the Aegis, so as to time that Aegis which isn't in easy. response, which is not easy. Um, How long is the travel time is the question. And where was Zeros when he <laughs> exactly, fired it? I mean, yeah. some, sometimes you gotta gotta st stare down the barrel of the gun, <laughs> look towards where that Neath Arrow is coming from, because it does have a projectile that you can see. But if you're looking at that, then you're not looking at who's trying to hit you in the face at the same time. Exactly, and you're backpedaling or sidestepping to try and get into tower range, so... A little bit risky, I think, to go for the Aegis. Does help him against the Onher. Onher is definitely one that would rather you go beads than Aegis because even when you beads that wall impale, he can hit you with the rest of Desert's Fury. Does shut down Arkill a little bit. Here it comes. Nice hammer out from Dardes just to deny Arkill getting in range. But level five and even through all the damage. They hit level five too quick. That's the only story there. They hit level five just a hair too quick. And Dardes couldn't do anything about it, even through the shell, to stop the amount of damage that Jermaine took. And Jermaine too early on the Aegis. We were just talking about it. Difficult to time. It's not easy. Couldn't try and see where it was coming from, and it ends up working out. He gets crushed by that combination from Dick. So Dignitas get the first blood. They got first blood, second blood, third blood, and fourth blood in game one. But Mouse still found the victory. Game two, it was all Mouse until Dick came back towards the end. And now, well, Dick have switched up their comp a little bit more now. They're getting a bit more aggressive, and Nika will fall on this right-hand side. Just nice positioning more than anything from Cubo. Cubo nails that ultimate and Variety. Well-timed with his as well. Nika was trying to bait, bait out that ult, but a little bit too late. Cherio yeah. plucked back, but doesn't have the ultimate either. Used it to try and secure blue buff, it looks like there. Not going to have enough damage to actually bring down Cherio, though, so he will limp back to the safety of his tower and have to fall back to base. But as you said, the blue buff, I believe, I think that was stolen away. No, it actually still went to Mouse Sport, yeah. so Nika... Might be able to pick it up, though he doesn't have teleport available, so he has to walk all the way back from base. Means that it might disappear before he gets there. It's 30 second time on the floor, and <sighs> just about. It's about another 10 seconds. That is the most stressful moment in Smite. When you're running up and going, no, 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 yep. no, 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 no. Please, 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 please. Just waiting for the buff to, to disappear right in front of you. Tinks taking way more damage than Bargain for the zeros. Really good work, weaving those attacks. Not oh. enough damage. Oh, oh, oh man. Even Crusher. So close. Would Crusher have killed him? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Crusher kills Just because the power on it? Like Just because the extra power and pen. It, <laughs> honestly, if Zeros goes for Transcendence right away, he might have found that kill as well. well. Variety under pressure there by Nika, but we'll get back in time. No teleport available from just yet, although it will be up once he's back in base and buying up a couple more items. Pressure in the mid lane now with Big Man Tink taking a bit of poke. Zeros getting himself on the board early with that assist and some pressure. He needs that after the two last games he's had where he's been under fire the entire duration. EU was uh, pretty critical of North America's Hunter mid meta. Yeah. That's my master's land. And You're right. here we are, week two, with uh, two hunters in the mid lane. Maybe EU are just adapting North America's meta. Maybe North America were ahead of the curve. They just sucked just too bad to make it work. Yeah, that's probably what I'm trying to get. You know, yeah, in the I politest know. way possible. Trix, he's a brunt and damaged them. Surprised Tings didn't realize he could follow up on that there. Trix just got hit by the axe, and uh, he'll heal. Up in the mid lane, but Cherio blinks on Kivo, gets the beads out. Kivo in response, beads knocks up and removes the burst damage that was probably about to follow up. It was the ultimate that was about to follow up from Cherio that would have locked Kivo in a really bad spot. Quick reaction time, and I like the option to not ult away, because if he does and that gets caught, then he's dead to rights. Well, Taylor's all the time. Rama versus Anher, but Anher under pressure. Three-man rotation coming in. I should say two-man rotation, but Trix is already here, and Neef's always nice available if required. The walls come up big for tricks. Sprint for Rom ult. 
I think Arkill's probably okay with that because number one, it isn't his sprint that had to be used. Yep. Number two, this does open the door for the solo kill opportunities. That, that was kind of all kill going, oh, man, I'm fine. It didn't cost us anything. Don't worry about it. I wasn't in trouble. Jake's like, I used Sprint. What the yeah. hell? Come on, man. I had to come all the way over here, use my relic, and Arkel's like, yeah, that's your job. That sounds like what people what say to support us all the time. That's sure. what I mean. I, I think I nailed that little exchange. You did. Just under 1,000 gold in favor of Dignitas, and that's really just down to the kills more than anything else. But the experience is just showing they're doing a very good job of farming Dignitas this game. Mouse sports a little bit lackluster compared to the last couple. That really favors the the composition that Dignitas has gone for in my mind. Both both comps are double hunter. Both comps have three magical damage dealers outside of the two hunters, but only one has the Hebo, and that is going to be a big determining factor in the late game. I mean, you cannot let a squishy get hit by even a water spout in the later stages. Uh, whereas Cherio is going to do a lot of damage, especially with this Bancroft's town that he bought again, but. It's still not going to match that that Cubo will be outputting. He could just use his leap there. That's why Variety tried to use the pluck earlier on. And if he could find that pluck again, which he went for, he could have spelled doom and gloom. But Variety still tanking this one up. That's given a window for Cubo to get in. Thanks to Nico and that Stygian Ooh. Torment, Variety will escape. Didn't have to use his ultimate too, so no harm, no foul. Nika's ult on cooldown with the rotation from Cubo. Close, but Nika cannot quite find the kill. Variety. Was looking for the one for one at worst in that spot. Kubo needs to watch out, and he's going to be in a lot of trouble here. Nice wall. wall! Came out in perfect time from Cherio as he tried to ult away. Good rotation in from Mouse Sports to find a kill on a gank attempt from Dig that failed that turned into a free blue buff invade from Mouse. Love that play from Cherio. The blink forward, catching that wall right at the perfect time. And that is, uh, oh, it looks like it actually is pretty fortunate for Cubo that he got enough gold to finish off that Warlocks because having to go back to base on tier two Warlocks is a horrible, horrible <laughs> feeling because you know you've got to back again right away because you need to start stacking that as soon as possible. But Cubo, with enough gold to finish it off, ends up being a bit fortunate. And he'll be okay for the time being. All teleports back available for the solo laners too, but Gold Fury attention is turned in that direction, mainly for the Oracles for the time being, which will go to Dignitas. Mouse Sports securing their own red at the moment. But the Hunters in the mid lane working on, as we said, Transcendence, which is a little bit further ahead for Tings. I guess that's because he rushed that ahead of his boots. I believe he did, yes, and that'll be the difference in the stacks thus far. But unlike Devourer's Gauntlets and Warlock Staff, Ooh, Tings has got to be respectful of Trick Tank there. Trick Tank him with the walls, knock up from Hebo, and the final burst as he was falling from zeros was enough to pick up an absolutely free kill in the mid lane. And that's the second time Tings has been a little bit too far forward, and that's something that he definitely needs to work on still in the mid lane. We've been saying his praises, but you got to learn at some point. It's starting to go wrong for Mouse. We just saw Cherio yep. try to make something happen in the mid. He was like, okay, I'm going to go on tricks. I'm going to go on zeros. I'm going to go back on tricks. I'm dead. That's pretty much how that went down. Now Jermaine gets hit by the ult. Great pillar from Arkill gets the Aegis out of Jermaine. Jermaine's still not level 12, so doesn't have a secondary relic here. So the extra bit of damage out from Trix Tank will be impactful for a moment until the minions come through and the Devour's Gauntlets heals him back up. I really like that play from Ding Toss's Jermaine. I thought he might roll in there knowing that Arkill had just backed, but decides against it. Probably wisely so. Zero's hit by the hammer. In comes Nico on the rotation. Can't get the damage off just yet, but I lied. That's pretty much what I said. I lied. That was a lot of bursts very quickly. Zero's has uh, has met up with Nika quite a bit so far in this set, hasn't he? Nika's basically set up a tent underneath that tier one tower. I'm good in this set, and it's worked out beautifully so far for Mouse Sports. Nika continues to look pretty solid in this set. And I'm not going to lie, like I've been critical of Nika because I don't feel like he was rotating against a lot of opposition, but here today he's done a lot of that. Kivo, Fred under pressure, will ult away to safety. Trick Tank kept the other members busy enough that they couldn't get the first burst damage down. And Arkill securing the red buff to make sure that can't be stolen away. Only thing available for Mouse Sports here is potentially the Gold Fury, but they're not really comfortable about it just yet. But I love that, uh, I love that aggressiveness from Mouse Sports that we're seeing because I, I was worried just as you were, I think, that we see those two kills in mid, it's yep. starting to fall behind a little bit. You know, where are they at mentally after that last game loss? And then they bounce back, get that kill on the zeros underneath the mid tier one. Then they keep that aggression going, get out beads and ultimate from Cubo Fred. Those are two huge cooldowns that make Cubo incredibly vulnerable now. Mm. Uh, I love the fact that Mouse Sports is not just sitting on their hands and waiting for Dignitas to come to them because how they got their leads in game one and two were taking it to dig. And instead of just letting Dig stabilize and, and get back to an even board state, now 
we're at a point where Mouse Sports and Dig are even, and Dignitas doesn't have the momentum anymore. Funny enough, though, I do like Dignitas' counter initiation more than anything else. Mouse sure. keeps diving in. You've got enough counter initiation tools to get you away from the danger and then chase potential after the fact if they want to re-aggress. So we'll see if Dig play around the counter attack and allow Mouse to keep coming onto them. Oracle's spawning, and that's where Dignitas is grouped up, and Quick Burst will secure them in the vision on the Gold Fury, which is a good time to get it because Jermaine's finished stacking his Devourer's Gauntlets, and Big Man Tings Ooh, has plenty of damage. Zero took more damage once again than he bargained for as well. We'll have a heal from the Unravels to sustain some of that back up, but Jermaine eats an Impale on the left-hand side from Arkel as he was trying to get back towards the base, or at least forced to base. Right-hand side, though, an invade from Chariot towards the Harpies as Kuvo trying to secure. This could be a play for Jermaine. Zeros, yeah. Yeah, that's just sorry, zeros, up, right. Zero's looking for Jermaine. Believe he still has the Aegis up and will life steal off that wave a little bit. No, Aegis was down, but wouldn't have been enough damage all by himself to nice. find that kill. A little root from Dardes there. Sorry, from Trix up there. Onto Dardes. Dardes was looking for the hammer. Onto Zero's, but it won't be this time round. Game's kind of stalled for a second or two. I think with the last bits of aggression we just saw of Dig getting two easy ki kills on Mouse and the Mouse answer in the back, everyone's just kind of like, okay, let's yeah. just reassess what's going on in this game here because it's getting a little bit messy. Well, right now, Dignitas don't want to aggress because both Cubo and Zero have hit level 12 and neither is backed for their next relic. And that's, and that's really, really important to get some extra safety. You mentioned about Aegis for Cubo. Do you expect to see that here over the blink? I think he's going to go for Aegis. I don't know that that's the right call. I think that... No, I think I still go Aegis here if I'm Cubo. It's just so risky to go for Blink. I feel safe with Aegis because of the burst. Right, like... there's a lot of bursts coming out from Mouse Sports. If there wasn't as much burst, it was just sustained damage. But Kabraken is like all burst. Uller is burst. Jermaine has the ultimate. Uh, I, I think that Aegis is the right call, but Blink. he goes for the Blink. And, and I don't mind this, even though I was just saying that I think Aegis is the right call. There is some merit in my mind to going for Blink. And, and like well, I was saying when I first saw the pick, if you just ignore the front line now, if you're Cubo Fred, let Cherio Blink, you counter Blink. Big Man Tings is going to step up because number one, it's Big Man Tings and he has problems not stepping up at times. And also it's Uller and he needs to be fairly close to follow up off of Cherio. You could, uh, you could crush him with you your could. wave that crushes. It does crush. That's what it does. I was actually going to defend a point that I thought would probably make you who's on this cast there about his love for Hebo and all aggressive. You're a glass cannon. You're there to do damage, not survive. So why not just dive in with the blink and play the aggressive route? You can play either way, for sure. We'll see if it works out. No, still don't go for your attempt from either side at the moment, which I'm kind of surprised about. Neither really feeling they have an advantage, which I would say would go to Dignitas. If anything, with having an Anher and the Hubwar, I feel a little bit more confident yeah, around but that Gold Fury. Cubo hasn't finished stacking quite yet. Neither has Arkill on the on the Devo gloves, because Arko went for boots first, trying to play very aggressive in that lane. I, I think that Mouse Sports has still has a slight advantage going for gold right now. I like that little crusher out from Arkill as well. Not something you have to see all the time, but specifically, if you hit the Impale, it means they're in combat for a few seconds afterwards. They can't reinitiate with the Blink. Crusher and that little bit of dot damage can be a little bit impactful. Great Axe! Oof. Man, oh. threads the needle oh. and zeros. Oh! He didn't even beat the ages. He just went, you know what? I deserve to die for that needle thread, and that was an impressive Axe. Man, I cannot believe Holy that moly. Axe actually landed. I think that zeros I... is the same feeling. He's complaining. That's yep. for sure. You can always complain. Arkill's complaining. Now is the Snipes rain down from Jermaine. Cherio can't secure the kill. Dardes just gonna hammer Trix Tank as Kiva was trying to rotate to help out, but Jermaine and Ting still hanging around. Trix forced back to this could be a good goal for your attempt. A great goal for your attempt, but they have to be wary because Zeros is up in eight and he's got that ultimate available. Can they get back there in time is a real question for Zeros. Nearest to it is gonna be Variety. He's got lurking in the waters. But he needs to be lurking back towards mid lane now, but he's surrounded by three members. The pin is good! Jermaine gets a free kill as Variety just Caught between a rock and a hard place, and the hard place was a Cerberus and a dragon. Nika blinks forward and realizes he's all alone and was hoping that maybe Cubo would use beads or ultimate in response to the blink sound. Cubo plays it nice and patient, and so he gets away with uh, just stripping away that blink from Nika Mouse very, very quickly. Mouse are back in the lead here. They find that pick on zeros, which was all credit to Big Man Tings on individual play there to find that. And then straight after that, they poke out dual lane and get a gold fury. Now they're in the driving seat once more, but it's not as much as last game at this stage. They still got work to do. Still foot sending it four to four, and Cubo's again just stacking up that warlock staff. It's going to take some time for that Hobwa to get to the point where he's got that HP to withstand the burst damage 
coming from Cherio and Big Man Tings, and honestly, even Mika with that Cerberus. I think the one thing about the Warlock stuff that we were discussing is, you know, you're only going to get three stacks at a time in the jungle. I think that's yes. one of the most awkward things about And that's why, why I don't it like it. So long. It just takes yeah. so long. I mean, it's... I mean, 18 minutes to be at 84 stacks isn't horrible, but sure. it's not where you want to be. Well, Trickstack doesn't really want to be here right now, and he has to dash away back to safety. Needs a bit of poke from Big Man Tings yet again, who's climbing up the standings once more. Almost 8,000 player damage. As Mouse continue this three-man group in mid with a double Guardian and all. Mika coming from that right side. Variety is healthy, but saw how long it took him for to, to, to pop on that top left side right after Gold Fury. Not that long with the Prot Shred from Voidstone and the Ghastly Breath from Nika. Need a bit of a Ghastly Breath right about now, but Walls Crush onto Tings. Tings forced to beads away from the plug from Variety. Although Zero's in trouble again. Aegis is bad in a moment, but Nika's there to secure. Lots of damage coming from Arkill's ultimate though, and he'll find Cherio with help from Variety's pluck, but now he's in a bad spot, has to beads and leap away. Nika good picks ult. up two with the ultimate. Kubo still got Crushing Wave, hasn't used it yet. Was it good ult? And it was onto the two tanks though, but Mouse weren't in position to follow up, specifically with two Hunters. I mean, there's only auto attacks they could really put in there. So it's a one for one, zeros for Cherio, zeros yet again. Being abused this game, being focused, and Nika, rightly so, is the one that keeps chasing him down. Man, Nika is really making Zero's life a hell this game and this set entirely. Look at the player damage on the left-hand side. Cuvo and Zero's below everybody else, including Dardes and Trickstank. Yeah, very awkward situation to be in them for Dignitas at 20 minutes in. There's that Gold Fury down, though, for Mouse. They got a bit of a gold lead off that, and that fight in mid was interesting enough. Even if Cherio does die, he's still a Guardian at the end of the day. It's not Doom and Gloom, but look at the level difference between those guard those junglers. 17 to 14, that's a three-level lead for Cubo Fred. But then, look at the mid laners. 17 to 14, <laughs> just the other way around. So, yeah. three levels, uh, and Cubo's been splitting a ton of waves in mid, whereas Cherio really has not, and mm -hmm. that's where a lot of that difference comes from. It's also been that Cubo has really dedicated himself to farming, whereas Cherio has been consistently attempting to gank different lanes, put pressure on the map, and, and that makes sense for each of their respective picks. Kabraken wants to utilize his early base damage, his early tankiness, and extra HP that he gets just from being a Guardian, and then leverage that into the late game with getting leads and helping out of the rest of his squad as Zeros eats yet another hammer. Uh, whereas Cubo wants to get into the later stages and get to the point where he's the one-shot machine, and now that he's finished off Soul Reaver, that's a, that's a big box to check to get there. And he's finished off stacking the Warlock staff. Not so sure about that skin out of zeros as Mouse gets the Pyromancer because every single time he backflips, he goes, Ahoy! So everyone gets a nice little early warning sound of uh, backflip on cooldown. And then they'll jump yeah. onto him. Every every neat skin makes some sort of noise. Not off, as off loud as that Ahoy one. Well, no, if it was Ahoy, it would be the, the Pyromancer. You'll hear it. There it is. Why? Goes off again. Big Man Tings does manage to get out of the danger zone for a minute after the plug from Variety. Triple knock up in the jungle for a second there, but everyone's going to be okay. But it did no damage because Cubo still doesn't have any penetration. That's what, another reason why I'm not a big fan of this Warlock Staff Rush, because it's expensive. Does have Take a some extra Reaver gold. Now. Got some Soul Reaver. Those are two expensive items in his first three slots, and now he can't pick up an early Obsidian Shard or an early Spear of the Magus, whatever he needs. Well, this seems to be the plan from Diggis to just hold out. Weather yes. the storm, so to speak, in, in the early stages of the game until around the 25, 30 minute mark. And then, okay, we're full build. We've got the penetration we need. We've got everything else. And then go from there. And this could be about time where we see Mouse look towards the Gold Fury yet again. If they can do what they did last time around the Gold Fury, find a pick in mid, and then poke out a couple of members, they could look at that Gold Fury once more. That Gold Fury is going to be really important because Mouse Sports, if they get that, that pushes their lead to what, five, 6,000 gold nearly? They're already sitting at 3K above. 6,000 gold and 5,000 gold, those are full item leads most often for, for teams. I mean, that's a, averaged out to 1,000 gold a player. So you're sitting at an extra tier three item as opposed to the rest of the squad. So it's a little bit risky when you start getting down that much gold to start taking fights. It does worry me a little bit that Dignitas play through Zero so much that when Zeros gets focused, Dignitas kind of slow down. It needs the other members to step up. Trickstank gonna get the ultimate out of Nika and then ult himself, but he's still under pressure. Does manage to fire a window. Dardes comes in to force a couple of members to dig back. Dardes stunned again. Arkill's ultimate shredding through him, but the snipe's coming down from Jermaine. Not enough to bring down Trix quite yet Good until the shot. third finds a home. That was blind too. Jermaine has no ward vision there. It's one for one, support for support. And that's all it'll be. But the one thing you saw there is Dignitas kind of hang back a little bit. 
The initiation was all on Trix. Trix survived it. And then Dick reinitiated, found a pick of their own onto Dodders, who went a little bit too deep on his own. The rest of the team, I don't think Mouse were really in position there, Agro, to contest properly. Well, it, Dignitas kind of bluffed that they were on Fire Giant. They clear the wards, and they just kind of hang out a little bit. Nika blinks in, thinking that they are on Fire Giant, and then he has to retreat. Dignitas push him back a little bit, force his ultimate defensively, and then Cherio comes in to try and assist, and that's where the bait all starts, just because of that ward vision, or lack thereof, from Mouse Sports. Alice of the Yellow River down on the ground. If you've not seen it before, it's also called the Wet Paper. But what that thing that does do, apart from give mobility, extra movement speed, and to slow the enemy team, cleanses slows, which are pretty impactful when you look at what Mouse have on their team. So those slows, like Darnis's Hammer, for example, Jermaine and Nika, for example, all have slows in their kit. This ability is nuts. It's stupid. It is. Like, for a long time, this was classed as not an ultimate, where all his other abilities were ultimates. That is now an ultimate. With okay. the love it's had over the years, it's huge. Okay, okay. I get it. It's like the thing. Hebo's got every ability as an ult. I mean, does he? But can you imagine if that was actually an ult? That ultimate would be bad. That'd be a bad ult. Come on. Yeah, I guess. It would right. be a bad ult. You're right. Thank you. Maybe if it was global. That would be a good ult. Is that a good ult, then? That would be a broken ult. Why? Because you said the word global. I'm going to speak to the design team. See how that works out. Goldview, he's started by Dig. Right, took way more damage than he wants to, but he's still alive somehow. He got a bit of a heal out from Trix Tank and the ultimate jukes the last shot in time. Just a quick sidestep gets him out. But it cost two ults for either side. Goldview, he pulled again. Nika back in base, has TP up. Dot is on the front line, hammers Trix in the face. Jermaine's still hanging around. Nika back in with the teleport to the left-hand side. But Variety teleported in himself. Cherio stunned, has to use the Purification Beads. He's out of there for the moment, but Zero's still trying to chase him down. Oh, Cherry, Cherry locked in place. He got body blocked by the Monolith there from Trix Tank. Good work from Trix Tank with the Monolith, and still Variety going aggressive, trying to buy time for Dig to get the gold, but they've not started it up just yet. Nika and Dardes will lead the charge in. Jermaine on the back camp's going to base as his things they surrender. After Cherry always died. Yeah, give it up. Then not, this is not a, a game-breaking Gold Fury. Uh, I, I said it was important for Mouse, and it was, and it's important for Dignitas because now the game's even. But the game is even. Uh, that's not a horrible spot to be in if you're Mouse Sports. You've still got Double Hunter in the late game. You've still got a Rom named Jermaine, who's really damn good at that character. You're in an okay spot if you're Mouse. If you go in and try and steal that away and lose two members, then Fire Giant goes down. You're in a much, much worse spot than just giving up that objective. With Double Hunter, though, do you not like to see some crit come out? I can understand it with Anher and Neath, but maybe Rama with a bit of crit here could be nice? Normally, I'd say no, because the enemy team is definitely going to be building Thorns and Hide of the Nemean Lion, haven't. but Variety didn't do that. So, yeah. especially against Akibo, yeah, I would have liked to see some crit yeah. coming from Jermaine. I think he was expecting more physical defense from Variety in particular, and as well as that from Trix Tank, but... <laughs> you know what Trix just did then? Trix was about to say that blue, and he's like, can I, can I take this blue? And he's waiting for a comms call, and the comms call like, yeah, okay. And he's like, yeah! All right. That's, that's all it was. You could just or, see the step of like, oh, I should check first. Or, can I take this blue? Variety's like taking a drink of water and can't respond, and then Trix takes it before he can he stop says, and okay. say no. Because you know he's going to say no. That, that's true. I mean, you want blue as anybody, really. Cooldown right. reduction of mono regen is huge. It's pretty good. Variety on Zonja, workers, Dignitas gonna pull the fire giant left and Sings on left. Sings is all the way over there, no red buff even available. Kivo, Fred, and Zero's looking to try and find a couple of picks potentially as it was all Arkill working away in the fire. Nika, Cherio, and Dardes are all here. Oh, ultimate, but Dignitas already got the fire giant. Yep. Now Cherio is pretty isolated. Nika gonna jump in and try and help him out. Stygian Torment doesn't really pull too much, and Cherio gets Ooh. cut down. Zero's finds Nika as well. Whoa. Dardes really low. And Mouse Sports just not in the right position. It comes back to experience for me. I don't think that, that Energy or Obey or Rival end up getting caught sleeping going to clear purple buff at 27 minutes. I, I just don't understand the group in mentality of Mouse there. That was the awkward. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah what? The, the carries weren't with them. No. And they had to. The carries were still on the rotation when the tanks are in a battle that they need their support. And that's. And, and, and I wanted to go back to game two, and, and we see it again here in game three. This is how teams that are th the best teams always end up winning. Because you can make every right decision for 18, for 26, for 27 minutes, and the moment you make one wrong one, you lose the game off of it. And it, I, I, it's kind of like the, the exertion effect of, of having to play against a team like Dignitas where they put pressure on you 
all the time where, yep. okay, that's fine, but don't mess up next time or we're going to win. All right, you got that one, but if you mess up the next time, we're going to beat you for it. And eventually that mental pressure, I think, ends up breaking teams that don't aren't as used to playing at that level. And I think that's what happened to Mouse Sports in game two. And I think it happened here as well. You just end up making one bad mistake and then Dignitas is going to punish you so heavily for it that you lose the game off of it. Well, with haste, Dignitas take down two towers on the right-hand side. Only two remaining on the left of them to look at, and it's also the lane furthest away from the Fire Giant. So take that Phoenix down if you can. Go for up in a minute and a half. Get that on the turnaround. Mouse have to defend, and in terms of wave clear abilities, relying on Ul and Rama for wave clear on defense, I'm not 100% confident about that. Like, Siege defense is not something they're going to be very strong at here. Outside of just literally having their tanks stand on the front line and go, hit me while my hunters clear the wave. Especially without Odysseus Bow. Once Odysseus Bow comes out, it's a little bit easier. Yeah, you can fair. just auto attack down the melees and it'll kind of clear the archers for you with Odie Bow. Big Man Things doesn't have that quite yet, so oh. it'll be harder. I was looking at a sneaky attempt, maybe. Nope. Changed the mind for a moment. They all hovered in the jungle. Like, are we going to see a gank attempt on a tier one to slow this down? Instead? I think that's better. I think I would have liked to see Mouse do it because their Surprise. their team fight is better in jungle yeah. than it is in lane. But it would have been in lane though. No, I, no. I think that you're looking to to catch someone oh, out who's rotating. rotating through in the jungle in that spot because Cherio's walls are much more impactful in the jungle than they are in lane. Same with Nika's ultimate. Jermaine has, uh, has less room to worry about when you're juking him. Nika plugged down to half health and dead before his ultimate goes off. How about now it? it's a 4v5. Player damage, top of the charts is Big Man Tings. And then it's uh, Variety on the Sobek, followed by Arkill. Dardes plugged in as the ult goes onto Jermaine. Cherio to the back line, looking at Arkill and Cubo, but Bead's already used and Cherio forced out. Cubo with the Soldier, actually heating up a little bit more so as well. And now the left on Phoenix falls. Oh, Jermaine got blinked oh, on pillar. and crushed. Variety is going to find that kill. Big Man Tings getting hit heavy by Arkill and Zeros. Is Dignitas get the left side, Phoenix pluck onto Cherio, and he barely hits the ground before he dies. Now, Variety does trade his life out there, but it's still a 4v2. And now in this 4v2, just the Titan stands between Dignitas and a victory that almost wasn't here today. They will thank their lucky stars, but honestly, in the world of Smite professional play, now and again, you need the rub of the green sometimes, and Dignitas got that today. Man, Mouse Sports has got to feel like they, they lost a real opportunity here, and you feel for them they because did. That, that is a, that they really did. I mean, yeah. there, there's no doubt about it. They had that, that they had that set, not just one game, but they had that set in the bag, and they throw it away with one bad team fight. It's got to be encouraging at some level. It's gonna hurt for a couple of days yeah. now for Mouse Sports, but looking back, I think that they can look at that and say, okay, we've clearly got what it takes to compete with the top dogs, and that's encouraging. Dignitas, on the other hand, have got to go, what the hell did it just happen to us? To be fair, Dignitas gets to sit there and go, okay, we got away with murder. Mm -hmm. Cool. But the rest of the league are now going to be looking at us like, well, if Mouse can do it, so can we. Sure. What did they do to put Dignitas into this spot? But Dignitas also gets an opportunity to look at their own weaknesses. When you're a team like Dignitas, and this seems kind of like a weird thing to say, but when you don't lose that often, it's hard to understand What's when you wrong? lose. Right. Yeah. So to lose that set, they lost that set, but got the victory for it anyways. I think it gives you more, you get more film to look at and say, okay, we're weak here, here, and here, instead of just, I think we could have done better with this, but we stomped anyways. You know, this is a this is a good learning opportunity for Dick. Who do you guys think deserves MVP for that game is the next question. Dick, it's us for you, who? Cuvo looked really good. Variety looked really good. I thought Trix had a phenomenal game on the Terra. Did. Uh, you could really go with, with, with just about anybody on Dick Toss in that one. Well, mind. you guys get to vote. And with that, we'll head over to the desk. Tom and Taco, break down game three. Great job, friends, there on that one. And, you know, Ryan brought up a really interesting point there. Like, uh, sometimes, even though you lose, even though you win, you, you really kind of lose. That was Dignitas definitely losing that set, theoretically. They do get the actual W there. But uh, I I'm looking at Mouse. This was a really bad feeling set because uh, they could have taken it home so many different times. It, it all depends, though, because. It even with Mouse having had leads in uh, a number of the games, it, it still is one of those circumstances where are you actually going to be able to close things out? Because I, I think that Dignitas are still a strong enough team to where even uh, though a lead it can be massive, it's not necessarily a guarantee. I mean, how many times have we seen it before where like Dignitas has played other teams? Rival especially, sure. I think, is probably the best example of this, where... 
they'll be behind, but they always seem to know how to play from behind. That just comes with experience. I think that this is a really important set for Mouse to kind of take home with, because like Edgar was just mentioning, you get more to watch, you get more to like analyze and break down, figure out where exactly things went wrong and try to adjust that for the future. I, I do feel as though this was maybe a set that Mouse could have easily upset in, but at the same time, it, it, it's a really difficult wall to climb. That is, uh, Dina does is, is such a, a titan. They're considered a European powerhouse even. So the fact that Mouse came this close has got to be an unsettling feeling for Dignitas in, in that I, I think they came into this game a little overconfident. It showed in game one. Sure. It showed a little bit still in game two. And then by game three, that was where the big picture really came together. And they're like, okay, no one's trolling anymore. No one's going to mess up. We're going to put it all together. I don't think you're giving Mouse enough credit. I think that Big Man Tings has allowed this team to improve. I think that Jermaine was a joke in Spring Split and is now stepping up. I think that Mouse Sports is not just the de facto, this, this is an eight team league where the seventh and eighth place teams are, are, are just, there's no way in hell they're gonna do it, frankly. That was the case in, in seasons past. Now with the six team league, I, I think Mouse, with the changes that they've made both to their their play style and, and the players themselves, uh, I think this is a squad that, that absolutely can beat Team Dignitas or, or anybody. I would give Mouse more credit if I didn't get to witness Dignitas's gameplay at Masters most recently. I think that if Dignitas were to have plug and played their gameplay from the Masters land prior to the finals, sure. we never get a game three here. Uh, that's just a, a matter of fact. I, I don't think this is even a, a one hour set, hmm. even with how exceptionally well Dignitas played at the spring split, like at the end of the spring split land for Masters. Here, I can give Mouse credit because I do feel as though Mouse did step up right. in the moments that they needed to. But as far as closing things out, that's just something that. Uh, they're the underdogs for a reason, and it's that you don't expect them to win. But well, when they're they the do, underdogs awesome. because historically they haven't performed. Well, that too, but it, it's just that like I, I think that Mouse had some opportunities to topple that and, and break past those barriers. It's just they couldn't find it or finalize on them. One of the big pillars stopping Mouse from doing that was Trix Tank. Fantastic stuff coming out of the support position. This guy just routinely shows up, goes to work, and does his job. Game number three, he played the Terra and looked absolutely fantastic. And it's actually great seeing this kind of Terra gameplay come through too because it's not very often that we get a ring in as supports being the big heroes in a set, but Terra, the way that Earth and Fury can really turn a team fight around is if Cubo already needed a healthy hand on the <laughs> Hava in terms of dealing damage. I mean, uh, this is just uh, giving him multiple. I, I, I love the setup fact that I loved the way that Trixink was able to effectively cut members off from Mouse on their escape patterns mm -hmm. between the root, the monolith blocks even. A lot of rock walls just getting in the way. Yeah, yeah, really good use of the geometry, not just the standard stuff coming out from uh, Trixink there. And that's to be expected. That's kind of what we expect out of Trix Tank. Obey and SK is coming up next. That should be a barn burner. Don't want to miss that one. Taco Dive will be on the horn. We'll be right back with more SPL. Don't stop. Turn off the lights. Nauseous. When I wake up. Don't 